Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I would like uh, to greet you, everybody here uh, on Cloud Foundry Summit. And uh, today I will be talking uh, about uh, uh, the latest uh, features and uh, technologies emerged in uh, Cloud Foundry ecosystem for the last uh, year. I will be talking about uh, their good parts uh, and uh, their bad parts. <coughs> also, I will uh, try to share some storage sto uh, stories uh, from uh, my personal experience with these uh, technologies and uh, from experience uh, of uh, my colleagues uh, with these technologies. Uh, let's, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Alex Zalesov, and I'm a Cloud Foundry engineer at Alteros. Uh, during the uh, last uh, two years, I do Cloud Foundry deployments I do uh, design of Cloud Foundry deployments, and uh, also I do the implementation and operation. Uh, after the deployment uh, is complete, I uh, often go to uh, the trainings uh, to educate our clients uh, better about uh, the operations of uh, Cloud Foundry and uh, best use of uh, past solutions uh, in their daily work. Uh, Pre, uh, previous to Cloud Foundry, I uh, built uh, management systems for traditional infrastructures like enterprise uh, server systems, uh, like uh, telecom systems. Uh, so I uh, know um, different types of uh, uh, infrastructures from physical servers to the cloud uh, uh, infrastructures we uh, see now. Uh, the first feature I want uh, to talk about is uh, a cloud config. Uh, cloud config is a way to extract uh, ER specific uh, configuration uh, from your manifest. Uh, typically, uh, you have uh, pretty much uh, information that uh, describes uh, your cloud, and uh, it is uh, and it is the same uh, across uh, all the deployments. Uh, one uh, example is availability, zo uh, availability zones. So uh, typically you use the same availability zone separation for uh, your services for Cloud Foundry. And uh, the next uh, type is networks. Uh, in a reference uh, Cloud Foundry architecture, you have uh, uh, networks for uh, elastic runtime, uh, and uh, you have service network uh, that uh, is used by all uh, your services like MySQL, Redis, PostgreSQL. Uh, and uh, in uh, some types of clouds like AWS, uh, you have uh, predefined uh, VM types. You can't change these, uh, but for example, in OpenStack deployments, where, uh, which we do um, when customer requires um, Cloud Foundry deployment in uh, uh, in the private data center, uh, you can define your own uh, virtual machine types uh, called flavors. So this uh, information is uh, a good candidate uh, for uh, sharing across all the deployments. And uh, when you extract it with uh, the cloud config, uh, you don't uh, repeat yourself uh, uh, defining it uh, in the each manifest uh, you have uh, for deploying your systems. Uh, it reduces there and uh, allows you to um, uh, have uh, deployment portability. So you have, uh, uh, so if you have, uh, for example, two deployments in AWS of Cloud Foundry, oh sorry, in uh, Cloud Foundry, uh, you maintain uh, two manifests and two separate uh, cloud configs. And uh, these manifests uh, can be pretty similar or, or identical. Uh, as far as you know, uh, before provisioning Bosch, uh, is it something? Is it something wrong? Is it? No. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, before provisioning Bosch, uh, you need uh, to create uh, some kind of uh, uh, server infrastructure, like uh, networks, uh, defined security groups, and uh, so on. Uh, we typically use uh, Terraform for this purpose. Terraform is an awesome tool. Uh, you define the configuration in your cloud uh, using JSON file, and then you can uh, check it uh, to uh, version control system, 
uh, you can diff it, and uh, Terraform is smart enough uh, to apply these differences uh, to your infrastructure uh, in uh, a resilient manner. Uh, before uh, Bosch Bootloader, uh, we got uh, outputs uh, from uh, this uh, Terraform script uh, that contained um, uh, network IDs, uh, subnet names, and uh, so on. And uh, we need uh, to put uh, this uh, information inside of our Bosch manifest, and then Bosch understand uh, uh, where it is deployed and it is ready to deploy other software. Uh, Bosch Bootloader um, automates the workflow uh, when you uh, create infrastructure with uh, Terraform script, and then uh, it automatically uh, inserts uh, the information about your particular cloud into the cloud config. And you will get uh, Bosch uh, already, uh, <coughs> already uh, ready to deploy your software. Uh, I like uh, this technology because uh, it, um, because it um, saves my time in two ways. First of all, uh, I can uh, just uh, uh, start the deployment and uh, it will uh, proceed unattended and in 40 minutes I will get uh, the Bosch deployment. And uh, the second uh, is, uh, as it is fully automated, it can be tested and uh, I don't know, I don't uh, need to verify the infrastructure uh, after the deployment. Before I need uh, to do the verification in case uh, I had uh, some typos when copying and pasting uh, these uh, values from the Terraform output to, to the manifest. Oh. Uh, now it is uh, limited to AWS and uh, Google Cloud uh, platforms, uh, but it is rapidly developing and I think uh, soon uh, you will be able to deploy uh, Bosch on vSphere and uh, OpenStack with Bosch Bootloader too. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the technologies in Cloud Foundry uh, ecosystem are um, dependent on each other. For example, uh, Bosch Lynx uh, is a service discovery mechanism and it allows you to utilize uh, other technology. Uh, I have talked about um, uh, the cloud config more effectively. Uh, if you have, um, uh, if you have uh, IPs in uh, your manifests, uh, you can't uh, truly separate a networking configuration uh, from uh, the system. Uh, and you can't uh, truly use uh, cloud config. Uh, with Bosch links, uh, you can reference uh, one job uh, uh, from another in manifest, and then uh, Bosch uh, does all the job uh, of making these uh, jobs uh, to speak uh, to each other. So it is... Uh, uh, a static service discovery uh, mechanism. Uh, we use uh, this technology to replace uh, all the static IPs uh, from our, uh, from our uh, releases that we maintain. For example, uh, Elasticsearch one, and uh, um, um, some releases that are already migrated uh, to uh, this technology, like uh, Concourse. Uh, we can uh, deploy them using a cloud config and using Bosch links and uh, not doing these uh, static IPs uh, uh, rewriting. Okay. Uh, now something about security. Uh, components of Cloud Foundry installation, uh, I think majority of them now, uh, can talk to each other using uh, TLS encryption. Uh, so uh, nobody, uh, nobody except uh, these uh, two instances uh, can understand uh, their traffic. And it is a big deal when you want uh, to deploy uh, your Cloud Foundry infrastructure in, inside of public cloud. In private cloud, uh, you can have a rack and uh, a switch in it, and you can physically secure uh, access uh, to your network. Uh, but in uh, public cloud like AWS, uh, you have uh, your network shared, within, uh, shared between uh, several instances, and you can't uh, guarantee that uh, somebody else uh, is tapping into your traffic. Uh, I have a story of a customer uh, who had um, 
who had a, a main installation of Cloud Foundry on OpenStack in a private data center and uh, wanted to add uh, AWS installation for elasticity. Uh, because uh, uh, when you have uh, installation in private data center, it is uh, elastic only on application level. On hardware level, you still need uh, to buy new hardware and to manually install it uh, to the data center. In AWS, you can um, uh, uh, buy resources on demand and then uh, free them. And uh, because uh, we have uh, no uh, such feature at uh, that time, it was about a year or two ago, uh, we could only move um, the testing, uh, the testing uh, uh, to this uh, environment, to the AWS environment. Uh, it was uh, pretty elastic. You run tests and then you can tear down uh, this environment. Uh, and it, uh, uh, it doesn't uh, work with uh, the customer data, so uh, it uh, has uh, pretty loose uh, security restrictions. But now it is possible. Oh, uh, this is my favorite one. Uh, this is uh, uh, Bosch uh, uh, 2 CLI uh, that is written in Go. Uh, when I first uh, read about it, I thought, uh, okay, what is the big deal uh, of uh, rewriting uh, Bosch CLI from uh, Ruby to Go. Uh, but when I uh, um, uh, do hands-on with this technology, I understood uh, that uh, it is completely right with uh, a separate set of features. Uh, it allows you to um, substitute uh, uh, tools for merging manifests like uh, Spiff and Spruce. Uh, with uh, native uh, CLI, so you don't need a separate tool to uh, uh, merge uh, several parts of manifest together. Uh, it, uh, uh, it can uh, generate uh, default secrets for you. Cloud Foundry uh, uses a lot of secrets uh, inside. For example, it uh, uses a secret uh, uh, that is shared between GoRouter and NAT server, uh, to, and uh, they use this secret to talk together. Uh, as operator, I don't care uh, about uh, how my um, router is uh, talking to NAS server uh, since it is secure. I um, care about some secrets like uh, administrative secret when I uh, use it to log into Cloud Foundry, and I uh, care about uh, uh, the certificate that I place on a load balancer or go router uh, uh, because it is um, encrypting client traffic. But uh, Internal certificates between the uh, Cloud Foundry components um, can be self-generated and uh, uh, while they are managed uh, correctly, I don't care what they are. Uh, before uh, Bosch uh, 2 CLI uh, was available uh, to do uh, TLS encryption of traffic uh, in Cloud Foundry, you need to generate certificates uh, manually and then insert them to the manifest. Uh, and uh, the manifests uh, uh, become, became uh, huge. I think uh, uh, I saw about 5,000 lines uh, manifest in the practice, and uh, they were very hard to manage. Uh, now you can uh, generate these secrets, and they will be stored locally in your file. Uh, Credit Hub project e, uh, moves uh, this uh, te technology even further. Uh, it automates uh, credential generation, uh, storage, and uh, lifecycle management. Uh, but it adds um, another feature. Uh, when, you, um, when you do local uh, credential management, uh, it is good uh, when you uh, are the only person that operates this deployment. Uh, but uh, when you have a, a team of DevOps engineers, uh, you need uh, a secure way to distribute uh, credentials between them and uh, to um, uh, maintain these uh, credentials uh, in, the con in a consistent way. Uh, you can use uh, GitHub uh, to um, collaborate on configuration, uh, but uh, for uh, credentials, uh, the best uh, possible solution was uh, something like uh, passing uh, this uh, YAML file uh, between these DevOps uh, engineers. Uh, 
uh, Cred Hub uh, provides you with uh, the centralized server uh, where you can upload uh, these uh, credentials and uh, you can extract uh, these credentials from your Bosch manifests. So uh, the Bosch manifests become uh, easy to manage. Uh, you can just uh, put, in, put them uh, into your GitHub account and uh, don't worry that uh, some of uh, uh, AWS access uh, keys uh, leak uh, uh, to the bad place. Uh, uh, I want to share my personal story uh, with uh, uh, Bosch Manifests. Uh, when I uh, just started uh, working with uh, Cloud Foundry, uh, I uh, deployed uh, some stuff with Bosch, and uh, I wanted to share Manifest uh, with other people to ask uh, for help. Uh, I uploaded it to, to, uh, to, the, Git, uh, to the GitHub GIST and uh, didn't delete uh, my AWS uh, credentials. And <laughs> then I discovered uh, that uh, there are two kinds of bots uh, constantly uh, searching through the GitHub for the keys. Uh, one kind of bots uh, are the good bots. Uh, they uh, will tell you uh, that your credentials are compromised when, you f when they find your key. And the other bots are bad bots. So they will spawn about uh, 500 uh, VMs in the AWS account uh, and start mining bitcoins. Uh, I was lucky. Uh, I received the email that my credentials were compromised and I quickly recycled them. Uh, but uh, it was not a pleasant experience. Uh, so uh, I think uh, CredHub uh, will uh, make uh, uh, this credential management for the future generations uh, of uh, DevOps engineers in Cloud Foundry less painful. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry, how much time uh, do I have? Ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, then uh, we have ten minutes. Uh, I will left uh, five minutes for answers, uh, for questions and answers. Uh, and uh, in uh, the last uh, five minutes, I will uh, talk about uh, two other uh, interesting technologies. Uh, first is uh, CF deployment. Uh, it is uh, the way of deploying Cloud Foundry uh, using uh, many of previously mentioned, uh, uh, mentioned technologies. Do you, have, do you actually have a little bit more time? It's uh, 1150. 1150? Yeah. OK, that's great. Uh, and, okay, one moment. So, uh, it uses uh, uh, many of the previously managed, many, uh, mentioned technologies. Uh, Bosch Lynx, uh, Cloud Config, uh, it separates uh, releases of uh, individual Cloud Foundry components uh, to um, separate entities, and uh, you uh, build deployment out of these uh, uh, many releases uh, either from uh, the single uh, monolith uh, CF release. Uh, <coughs> we use this uh, uh, deployment uh, for our proof of concept deployment now, and uh, we also uh, use it uh, for the training purposes. Uh, for example, uh, yesterday uh, our, my colleagues uh, gave uh, a training here on Bosch and uh, uh, they utilize this uh, CF deployment and Bosch uh, to CLI uh, uh, to install Cloud Foundry. Uh, it is not uh, production yet, ready yet uh, because uh, there is no um, way uh, to migrate deployment from uh, CF release to uh, the uh, CF deployment release yet. And uh, uh, it is not necessary uh, uh, good experience uh, upgrading one CF deployment to another. You, can, you may uh, want to delete it and uh, to start from scratch. Uh, but it is very promising, and uh, what uh, I love, uh, 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 what I love about this technology, uh, is uh, that it makes uh, deployment process of Cloud Foundry understandable. It is a big deal when you uh, speak with uh, students uh, in the training uh, to uh, make them uh, understand uh, how the Cloud Foundry is deployed, and uh, to make them understand this fast uh, without uh, diving in. Uh, into specifics of uh, SPIF manifest generation, 
uh, into specifics of um, uh, deploying uh, networking stuff in the ERs. Uh, this can be a dozen of steps, dozens of separate steps uh, for provisioning infrastructure in uh, the OpenStack or AWS. Uh, there can be a lot of steps uh, merging manifests together and uh, then adding Diego runtime inside of them. And uh, with the CF deployment, uh, you can uh, uh, do pretty diagrams and um, actually follow this process. Uh, and it will consist of uh, three or four steps. And the manifests uh, that uh, you get uh, using the CF deployment are pretty small. Uh, so you can just go through uh, these manifests uh, with your students and uh, uh, they will understand uh, each uh, line of uh, the uh, of the deployment manifest. So it's cool. Uh, on the top of your CF deployment, uh, you can uh, put a container networking. Uh, what is it? Uh, it is a policy server and uh, add-on to uh, garden run C. Uh, before, uh, before container networking, uh, you, uh, if uh, one of your applications uh, want to talk to another applications, uh, it need uh, to go uh, through Go Router. Uh, on OpenStack, uh, it was uh, even uh, worse because uh, uh, Go Router uh, typically has uh, a floating IP and uh, it is a separate VLAN and uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, traffic between the physical machines and on different levels. Uh, with, uh, uh, and the reason was uh, that uh, policies were enforced on Garoter level and uh, it, uh, it was hard uh, to put uh, uh, container to container networking. Uh, now the policies are enforced on uh, Diego cell level and uh, your containers can uh, talk uh, to each other without uh, going through Garoter. It will uh, decrease uh, the uh, amount of traffic going through GoRoter, so you need uh, possibly less uh, VMs, and uh, it will um, decrease uh, the latency of your uh, microservices communications. Uh, so uh, sometimes you have a pretty deep stack when a client requests uh, his first microservices, and uh, it funds out to um, other levels, and uh, uh, these microservices reply back, and uh, the final answer uh, goes to the client. Uh, now this latency is uh, lower. Uh, another story <coughs> was a performance story. Um, one day uh, we discovered uh, that our client uh, has uh, uh, timeout problems. So uh, engineers try to push uh, applications to Cloud Foundry and they timeout it. And uh, we looked in uh, this deployment and found out that uh, ETCD uh, was about 100% uh, uh, busy. It was busy on disk EO, uh, and this deployment was uh, on uh, pretty slow uh, HDD drives. Uh, we tried uh, to tune ETCD to uh, be faster, uh, but uh, it turns out uh, that uh, the possible solution was uh, just to uh, replace HDD with SDDs. Uh, it doesn't uh, suit us. Uh, we did uh, uh, a hack, uh, like uh, we uh, created a RAM disk and uh, make uh, ETCD uh, write to this RAM disk uh, instead of uh, actual hard drive disk uh, to go this problem. Uh, but it is, was an uh, ST hack and uh, I uh, didn't like it. Um, Sometimes uh, later, uh, Diego uh, was able to uh, store its data on a, a relational uh, databases like Postgres, like uh, MySQL, and uh, we moved uh, to Postgres, and uh, now we have known this problem. Uh, and the last uh, technology I want uh, to speak about, and uh, I wish uh, I would had uh, this technology uh, one year ago, uh, these are isolation segments. Uh, the isolation segments allow you to define group, group of applications uh, that uh, uh, run on, partic on particular set of hardware. So you can efficiently um, 
so you can efficiently separate uh, uh, separate uh, different environments, uh, not on only on the container level, but on the VM level. And uh, combined with uh, routing uh, groups, uh, you can uh, separate uh, traffic uh, uh, from these isolation segments to separate go routers. Uh, typically, client uh, uh, typically uh, clients uh, want uh, to uh, separate uh, their environments like uh, production, uh, staging, uh, development, and uh, before uh, we used to. Uh, <coughs> to deploy several Cloud Foundry instances uh, for these purposes, uh, but it resulted uh, in uh, increased uh, effort required uh, to maintain uh, these uh, instances of Cloud Foundry, and uh, this uh, required uh, more resources because uh, you are duplicating stuff like Cloud Controller, UIA, and uh, everything else that uh, uh, can be pretty easily shared. Uh, now this uh, technology uh, is generally available. Uh, we haven't uh, used it uh, in uh, our projects yet, uh, but we are looking forward to, to do some proof of concepts with it and uh, to make uh, future deployments uh, uh, <coughs> use this technology. Uh, this is uh, just a small part, uh, okay? Uh, this is just a small part of the technologies uh, uh, that were merged uh, in the Cloud Foundry ecosystem during uh, the last year. Uh, when I uh, do, uh, did research uh, for this talk, uh, I outlined for, for about uh, 50, 50 separate technologies. Uh, and uh, if you want uh, to talk to me with, uh, about other technologies and uh, or to share your stories of operating them, uh, please come to our booth, to Al Altero's booth uh, that is in the hall. And uh, uh, now it is. Uh, yeah, now it is time for the questions. Question about uh, mutual TLS. Okay. Is it the TLS between Bosch components or it is between Bosch and other deployments, for example, CF? Uh, this is a TLS uh, between... Uh, Within the Bosch director? No, no, no. Uh, I'm speaking about TLS uh, between uh, Cloud Foundry components like uh, ETCD yeah. and uh, Diego, uh, like uh, um, Go Router and NAS. Gotcha. This one. Is there any additional functionality? Because I think in the current deployment, we you, we do have uh, certificates. Like, for, for example, at CD has its own CA and certificates, so, uh, similarly console. Uh, just wanted to understand what's the new uh, functionality that we're bringing using the mutual TLS. Uh, uh, here, uh, I speak about uh, the previous uh, deployments uh, when uh, you don't put uh, certificates on your VMs, uh, so they, uh, uh, talk uh, using unencrypted traffic, and uh, it was uh, pretty easy to debug, for example, because you can capture packets. And uh, now you put uh, certificates to the VMs, to the different VMs uh, deployed by Bosch, and uh, when they communicate, uh, you can't uh, more see this traffic uh, flowing. Makes sense. This is about. We have time for another question. Anybody? All right. Um, the isolation segments that you mentioned last, um, what are the criteria you can use to um, like segment your apps? Can you do it like by org, by space, by, do you have any information on that? Uh, you have um, uh, to define your isolation segments uh, in two uh, places. First, you define uh, them in your Bosch uh, deployment. Uh, where you mark uh, uh, the cells that uh, are from one segment or another segment, and then you can bind uh, your isolation segment to your organization. Cool. Ah, we have one more. All right. Oh, so I guess you can do space level isolation. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Alex. I appreciate it. Thank you.